Um, I don't believe that spirituality by itself can hold the attention of a person's heart to the degree that they can be transformed. The fact that he said it says an awful lot. I no longer wonder why certain people don't ever want to have a biblical conversation about the text or about something that they said, because in many cases, some of these same people don't want to do so. Why? Because of fear of them being exposed. Think back to the Wizard of Oz. He didn't want people to look behind the curtains to see what was really going on, to see what he was really doing. He was all just kind of fictitious. It was all, it was make-believe gadgets and levers being pulled. It was just kind of mirrors and smoke screen. That's what we have at a lot of our churches. And the fact that this person who calls himself an apostle, who would even admit this, tells you that there's not, there's no regret. There's no shame. As a matter of fact, they are bold to be entertainers on stage. I know that this may ruffle some feathers, but I really do believe in something that I call spiritual entertainment. Um, I don't believe that spirituality by itself can hold the attention of a person's heart to the degree that they can be transformed. Now, I want you to hear what he just said. I don't believe that spirituality can hold a person's heart or their attention. Hmm. So that would mean that everybody in the in the New Testament, everyone that actually placed their faith in Christ, didn't have anything entertaining about what was going on. As a matter of fact, at the fear of death, that they weren't really saved. They, there's nothing that held them because there's nothing entertaining, nothing that captivated them. Let's replay this again and hear this again. I really do believe in something that I call spiritual entertainment. Um, I don't believe that spirituality by itself can hold the attention of a person's heart to the degree that they can be transformed. In order for you to hold their attention, you need a level of entertainment. So you need entertainment, you need education, and you need spirituality. Let me just go out and say this, that what he's saying is absolutely ridiculous. I would wish that more folks would come out and oppose some of this stuff. But to say what he just said is just absolutely and utter ridiculous. Now, let's just be clear. I don't think that I don't consider that the things that he says and the shenanigans that he that he's done. I don't consider him to have even the education. And there's a reason why he would lean more on the entertainment. Remember, I'll go back to the, to what he's saying here. But this is the same person, the same preacher that was not only on stage riding a bicycle and talking about other things. It's the same person that brought some sex toys and sex magazines on stage. Come on now, when nobody was there for me, I found my friend. Oh yeah, when nobody called me on Friday night, I don't care. As a matter of fact, you've become so good friends with your vibrator, now when your girls ask you to go out, you ain't even go, I don't gotta go out, I'm good, I'm good, I'm gonna stay at home. Oh, oh this is real. Real. Now, I will admit that I had no idea what that was in his hands, but he said what it was. And then having the the magazines, there's no need for that. You, you mean tell me you can't get your point across without that? Or do you really have to burn sage on stage to get your point across? Walking around. I'm talking about born again believers walking around. Hear me. Spiritual redundancy is a sign of immaturity. The reason why a person says that is because they cannot rely on the word. Why? They don't know enough of the word to rely on the word. They don't know, he doesn't know enough of the word to disseminate the word with passion. You should be so in love with the word that you have studied this word enough that you can even pick up the different nuances in the Hebrew, the Greek, the English. It doesn't matter, but your passion, your conviction will be evident how you preach it. And you don't need to resort to tricks and gimmicks. Recall in Acts 8, we come across a person who was a sorcerer, who liked tricks, who liked gimmicks. Simon, there's a man named Simon who, Simon who formerly practiced magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria. Him, This is him claiming, and we know this because, of the, because we look at the Greek, we see that this is him claiming to be someone great himself. And we know because the Greek word euton is speaking of him, something that maybe someone like himself might not know because He's more concerned with entertaining. And so he finds himself in the same place of a Simon who, when the Holy Spirit was given, what did he want to do? He wanted to buy it 
Why? So that he could also give it to other people because it would make him look good. He wanted to entertain people. This threefold cord cannot be easily broken. And I believe that when all three of these components are present and active, I believe that the believer, I believe that the listener, the hearer, I believe that anyone that's engaged in these three dynamics, all interacting together, education, entertainment, and spirituality. Now there are gonna be people that are gonna come back and they're gonna defend this person. And if you defend this person, it's because you are his clientele. He's speaking to you. You're not like what Peter was speaking of. Peter says this in 1 Peter 2. He says, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander like newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word of God so that by it, by what? By the word of God, you may grow in respect to salvation. That is, if you have tasted the kind of, that is, if, if, if indeed, if indeed Brian or anyone else who listen, if anyone else who wants to defend this that is, if indeed you have tasted, he says, by it, by what? The word of God, you will grow. Paul says that he's not a saint of the gospel. That's the preached word, because by it, it is the power of God unto salvation. No, but he's telling us that it must, we need to have some entertainment. People will say, well, wait a second. Didn't Jesus do different things, and, and or he used examples or props? No, Jesus didn't do any props, didn't use any props. When, when Jesus healed someone, he didn't do something for the sake of putting on a demonstration with some props. Remember, the people that were actually healed were actually healed. What he did, he actually did. And so you can't come back and use Jesus as an example. He didn't have any props. Jesus actually used things and did things to people. I believe that their heart is overwhelmed. I believe that their uh, spirit is revived. I believe that they're equipped for their destiny and for their assignment. And that's what we hope to accomplish at the Destiny Experience. At the Destiny Experience, don't go there. Let me just say that, do not go. If that's what they're selling, uh, some sort of experience, some sort of entertainment, because what you'll leave with is remembering that. Notice what notice what Jesus says. Let's, let's put some things on, on the screen. Let's look at the passages. Jesus says, or Paul says this, not Paul, I'm sorry, John says this in John 20, 30. He says, therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Why? Don't we need these signs, these things to, to catch us? He says, but these have been written so that you may believe. What? Well, we're told about the signs. We're told about these different things that can kind of keep us and captivate us. The reason we're talking about different signs is because the Bible tells us that those that want to see these signs, he calls them, Jesus calls them an evil and adulterous generation. They want to see more stuff. They want to see more and more stuff. However, what does Paul say? Notice this, Notice how Paul puts this. He says, but after we have already suffered and been mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we have the boldness in our God to speak of the gospel. Hmm. Not to, you mean not, not to give out something that was entertaining, Paul? No, but to speak the gospel of God amid, amid much opposition for our exhortation. Exhortation of what? Oh, the words, the teaching. Our exhortation does not come from, from error or impurity hmm. or by way of deceit. This word deceit also refers to cunning. Uh, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, more words, more words, not entertaining. So we speak not as pleasing men, but God who examines our heart. The whole point when you speak and you say anything, the audience that you need first and foremost be aware of is God. He says, for we never came with flattering speech as you know, nor with the pretext for greed, God is with, we didn't come seeking glory. We didn't come to put on a show. We came to give the gospel. This man says though, as he coins the phrase, spiritual entertainment. And that's what it is. He's trying, and you really can take the spiritual off. It's just entertainment under the guise of spirituality. If the word can't hold you, then entertainment will never keep you. So you come for this, you come for that show, you come to be entertained, you come to gasp, you come to ooh, you come to ah, you come to laugh and cheer, but you're not desiring the pure word. So that indicates, not for him, him aside, but for you, if you're coming to be entertained, then we have a problem. You're coming for the wrong reasons. I'm not saying that it can't be entertaining, sure, but not for the sake of entertainment. You're not putting on a show. Let the word come that's coming out of your mouth let that be what's entertaining. Let it, let that be what grips you. Let that be what holds you. If someone's got to put on some sort of show, ride around, do different things, that's a person that's not sure of what they're doing. I said it before and I'll say it again. If you've got to dress up the word of God, it's because you don't trust the word of God. You don't value the word of God. You think it's missing something. You think it's lacking something. And you think that you are the person 
to present it in a better way than even Christ himself did. And therein lies a problem. So if you want to go for spiritual entertainment, fine, have at it. There'd be plenty enough room for entertaining yourselves in hell because that's where a lot of folks are going to go because they did not do as Peter said. They did not desire the pure word of God. I'm not saying that if a person is entertaining in their delivery, matter of fact, you should be entertaining in your delivery. The passion should come out of you. Your convictions, your personality come out of you. When I speak, when I give the word, my personality comes out and I hope it's entertaining enough, but I'm not doing it to entertain. I'm doing it because there is something at stake people's soul. And I'm not going to use something, some, some, something that's entertaining that might not be there next week. Because when you're going through something, when you're in the, when you're in your darkest of hours, when things are happening, when people are coming at you, when there's different despair or confusion, what do you need? You need the word. Why? Because the writer says, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. I've kept your word. I've kept the faith, the tenets of the faith, as Paul says on his deathbed. I've kept the tenets of the faith. But what's happening is more and more folks are moving away from the tenets of the faith, being led by someone who can just manipulate the audience because of different things, because of different gimmicks, because of things that can entertain them and it'll keep them coming back and keep them coming back. Because next week, what you did this week won't hold them. You got to come out with something new and the following week, something new, and the following week, something new, something better. And they'll get tired of this. Hey, can you step this up again? We need something more entertaining. After a while, when they realize that when they need a word of God, all they can go back to, all they can recall from your church is that you brought a sex toy to the church. All they can go back to is that you had a Playboy magazine at the church. All they can go back to is that you rode a bicycle at church. All they can go back to is that you burned sage at your church, but they can't recall the word. They can't go back and dissect the text for themselves because you haven't taught them that because you told us by your own words, spiritual entertainment, that people can only be held by not just the words or spirituality by itself, but there must be some entertainment. Shame on him, but even more so shame on the people that will listen to this and buy this and even defend it. Amen. <laughs>